Hello and welcome back to Simon's Rants. I'm Simon and today I want to talk about the top 10 best films of the decade. It's hard enough to make a top 10 list for a specific year. Making one for a whole decade, you're cutting out a bunch of really, really, really good movies. You might have a hundred movies, you're all vying for one spot on this list. But in the end, I could only pick 10 for each decade. So I hope you guys like the list, but keep in mind, they're not gonna be perfect. I'm gonna disagree with you on some things, and I haven't even seen every movie to ever come out, ever. I'm sorry, I might just have missed it. I've watched a lot of movies recently, guys, I'm sorry. I tried to get them all, I just couldn't. So please don't hate me, just leave your top 10 list in the comments below and we can talk about it there. And also please like and share, that helps me out a lot and if you're new here, subscribe. But that's enough for me, let's get to this list. Number 10, The Empire Strikes Back. The Empire Strikes Back is a 1980 film directed by Irvin Kirshner starring Mark Hamill, Harrison Ford, Carrie Fisher, James Earl Jones, Frank Oz, and Alec Guinness. And it is of course the sequel to the unexpected hit, Star Wars. But the sequel is better than the original in every way. The acting is better, the directing is way better, the writing is better, and it gets much deeper on a philosophical level and is darker and just a much more mature movie than the first one. And the few problems that are added to the story by making the sequel are easily outweighed by all the good things that are added. The philosophy surrounding the Force is much more interesting and deeper now. All the characters are more fleshed out and real. The special effects are better, the plot is bigger, the stakes are higher, not to mention one of the greatest villains of all time is returning, and it's got one of the biggest plot twists of all time. Everything about this one is just bigger and better than the first one in every way. Number 9. Full Metal Jacket. Full Metal Jacket is a 1987 film directed by Stanley Kubrick starring Matthew Modine, Arlie Ermey, and Vincent D'Onofrio. By 1987, every kind of Vietnam movie had already been made, so if you're going to make another one, you really need a good reason to make one. But luckily, Kubrick had one. The plot of the movie follows a select group of recruits as they go through the horrors of boot camp into the eventual horrors of the Vietnam War. And Arlie Ermey uses past experience as a drill sergeant to make it all that much more authentic. The scenes are raw, rough, and hard to watch, but extremely poignant and extremely good. In fact, it's almost too good because then the rest of the film has a hard time living up to the beginning. But as a whole, it's still very good and definitely deserves a spot on this list. Number 8. Brazil. Brazil is a 1985 film written and directed by Terry Gilliam and starring Jonathan Price. And Brazil is just absolutely brilliant. It's simultaneously a parody of the horror sci-fi from the German political commentary in the 1920s, while also being a political commentary to everything in the 80s and now. Yeah, all the sci-fi stuff is just a joke, but the political commentary is real. One of the political jokes that they make in this movie is that terrorist attacks are so common that people just ignore them because they're used to them. This movie came out in 1985, but they were talking about now. The comedy's on point, the commentary's on point, Terry Gilliam is simply brilliant, and this might be him at his best, this movie is great. Number seven, The King of Comedy. The King of Comedy is a 1982 film directed by Martin Scorsese starring Robert De Niro and Jerry Lewis. The plot follows a crazed fan of a famous comedian and talk show host as he tracks him down, stalks him, and even eventually kidnaps him to try to help his own career. He believes that he is just as funny and can be an even better comedian if just given the chance. The crazed fan is played by De Niro in one of the best performances of his career and the comedian by Jerry Lewis who is absolutely phenomenal. This honestly might be my favorite Scorsese film. It's extremely underrated. It might not be as polished as some of his later films, but it's extremely unique and original and I love it. It's a great story being acted out by great actors, being directed by a great director. What more could you want from a film? Number six. Back to the Future. Back to the Future is a 1985 film written and directed by Robert Zemeckis starring Michael J. Fox and Christopher Lloyd. The plot follows a high school kid who accidentally goes back in time and stops his parents from meeting. He must now get them back together before he goes back to the future. Or back to the present, but that doesn't sound as good. And he has to fix it quick or he and his entire family will cease to exist. This movie is pinnacle 80s cheese and it's lovely and perfect in every way. Obviously there's gonna be plot holes, obviously there's gonna be cheesy moments, it's a 1980s sci-fi comedy. What more can you expect? It's not highbrow. But it's so much fun, all the characters are great and all the actors have great chemistry. It's just a lot of fun to watch. Number five. Dead Poets Society. Dead Poets Society is a 1989 film directed by Peter Weir starring Robin Williams. And if you know anything about Robin Williams and his dramas, 
you're gonna cry. The plot follows a teacher at a boarding school who's trying to help the students understand a new perspective on poetry and literature. Not just reading the words, but understanding the beauty and the romance behind them. He challenges the students on a personal level and helps them to grow in ways that they had never thought they could before. Robin Williams is fantastic in this, and so are the students for that matter. A few of them actually got famous from this, including Robert Sean Leonard and Ethan Hawke. This movie is heartbreaking, it's profound, and it's poignant, and man is it hard to watch, but it's definitely worth it. Number 4. The Shining the Shining is a 1980 film directed by Stanley Kubrick starring Jack Nicholson and Shelley Duvall. I'm not generally a fan of Kubrick's style, I feel like he's overly perfectionist and overly meticulous. But when it comes to horror, he's absolutely great at it. All the perfectionism, all the nitpicking led to a hollow and haunting environment that was totally necessary to make this movie work. The plot of this film follows a man and his family as he takes over as caretaker of this hotel. They then get cut off from the rest of the world and become completely isolated. This then leads to them slowly slipping into madness, and then from there, it gets pretty Stephen Kingy. <laughs> the movie overall has a haunting and eerie aura to it, and it's stifling, but it's cut through by Nicholson's absolutely stunning performance. This is one of the greatest horror movies of all time, and a great deal of that has to do with Jack Nicholson. He's absolutely fantastic in this. Number three, The Princess Bride. The Princess Bride is a 1987 film directed by Rob Reiner, starring Carrie Elwes, Robin Wright, Sean Wallace, Andre the Giant, Mandy Patinkin, Billy Crystal, Fred Savage, Chris Sarenson, the list goes on and on, it's got a great cast. The movie is both a fantasy while also simultaneously parroting fantasies, which is something that only the best parodies can do. It's got fencing, fighting, torture, revenge, giants, monsters, chases, escapes, true love, and miracles. And on top of that, it's just one of the best movies to quote of all time. I'm very critical of fencing and sword fighting in movies because I actually used to fence and most of the stuff we get in movies is utterly stupid. But the fencing in this movie is actually legitimately good. For the most part, there's some cheesy fun moments too. It's got great characters that you love and great memorable moments throughout the movie. This is just a great movie, which ultimately is what brings us here together today. Number two. Platoon. Platoon is a 1986 film written and directed by Oliver Stone, starring Charlie Sheen, Tom Berenger, and Willem Dafoe. For me, it's really the performances by these actors that really hold this film together. Like I had just said about Full Metal Jacket, at this point you really needed a good reason to make another Vietnam movie. And they did. This movie follows a young soldier in Vietnam as he realizes the horror of war and that he might not actually be on the right side of things. He's surrounded by evil as even his own friends turn against each other and they start killing each other. It's a hard movie to watch and it's really heartbreaking in a lot of ways. But this is such a great movie with amazing performances by Willem Dafoe who's one of the greatest character actors of all time and Charlie Sheen who surprisingly proved that he was cast in this movie for more than just because his dad was in another famous Vietnam movie. People forget he was actually a legitimate actor before uh, Tiger Blood infusion. <laughs> all jokes aside, this is one of the best Vietnam War movies of all time, and just one of the best war movies of all time, and one of just the best movies, period, of all time. This movie is great. And the number one film for the 1980s is Scarface. Scarface is a 1983 film directed by Brian De Palma starring Al Pacino and Michelle Pfeiffer. And this movie was so good and so famous that Al Pacino got stuck playing this character for his entire career since. Oh well. <laughs> the plot follows a gangster and his rise to power and eventual overtaking of the drug cartel. He then succumbs to his greed and his life falls apart and then we go on from there. And why I love this movie so much is it perfectly shows the absolute insanity that comes along with power and greed. Pacino's character was never an angel in this film, but he started out as somewhat likable and actually relatable. By the end of this film, he's unrecognizable and it's honestly a tragedy. Like I said, not the most subtle movie, but that aside, this movie has great acting, good directing, good writing, and it's just a lot of fun to watch. It has everything you need for it to be the greatest movie of the 1980s. So that's my list. I hope you guys liked it. I know not everybody's going to agree with me, so instead of hating me, please just leave it in the comments below what your list is or your favorite 1980s movie, and we can talk about it there. Thanks for watching. Please like and share, and if you're new here, subscribe. Thanks. Bye.